Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm just jumping on live. This is episode 18, maybe. I'll wait for a few of you to arrive. I just want to talk to you a little bit about, firstly, the um, the lighting, but also uh, the noise that's outside because I've got a um, a fair that they've started just literally just over the road, um, like a like a fairground thing. Um, so let me know what you think of the sound as well, because if it's really bad, then I'll just have to move and we'll go we'll go in the bathroom or something. I'm at my mum's house um, today because we're having dinner after this, and so so yeah, um, this is episode eighteen. We're going to talk all about. Um, why a healthy gut equals a healthy mind and also how to um basically would you hey mandy um yeah good idea take us to the fair why not uh evening caroline good to see you nice to see you there um we're going to talk all about why having a healthy gut equals a healthy mind um I'll give you a little bit of a background. I'll, I'll wait for a few more of you to arrive. Um, let's just chat a little bit about your day. How was your day, everyone? How was your day? I'd like to know. Um, I, had a, I had a really good day. I had a funny thing happen. So I was doing work on, on our house. Hey, Natalie. How you doing? I was doing some work on our house like as in work work so it's that we're getting this um living room sorted and all these things and i've got this this builder guy in who's helping us and he knows i'm a little bit slack when it comes to these kind of things because i you know as soon as there's a little bit of surf i i tend to to jump off and and go and do that and um it got to about like just two hours in and i said oh um by the way trim i'm just gonna go and look at the sea uh, I'll be back in, in a jiffy and then like, you know, I think literally three and a half hours later, I got back in the door and he said, where the fuck have you been? I was going to go and call the Coast Guard. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I just got carried away. Um, so yeah, I got in a little bit of trouble for that. And I, I get the I get the piss taken out of me and my family for um, how I can kind of basically drop everything and go surfing. But that's just me. That's how I roll. Um, so let me take you through this stuff. Now, what I want to do is I want to just initially talk to you. Firstly, I've just got something to, to tell you. You can pre-order my book. Holy fuck. You can pre-order my book. From Amazon, on paperback, $9.99, from, published by Hay House the world famous Hay House Publishers. There's a link above if you want to pre-order my book. There you go. Just sort of throw that out there. It sounds really fucking cool to be able to say pre-order my book. It's a really nice feeling. Um, And basically, uh, so I wanted to mention that. And then I'm going to go into now. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you directly. And I'll ask you some questions. Okay. Do you know of anyone or yourself? more to the point, who suffers from or goes through experiences of, uh, and I'll go through the list, I'll go through the list that I wrote. Now, this is all from my experience as a, uh, from my kind of initial um, health coaching stuff that I used to do. So, um, unexplained irritability, brain fog and forgetfulness, bloating, thrush, weird on and off digestion, with kind of strange poos and like constipation and diarrhea, you know, gas, that kind of thing. Um, mood swings and poor sleep or just changeable sleep. So if any of you now, I want you to just comment in if, if you've ever had any of those kinds of symptoms and if you have had those kind of symptoms, whether you've had them recently or whether they're things that come and go, like. You know, we can go through a mood swing when some event has happened in life, but but quite often, I'll be the first to admit that the reason why I'm here on this on this this 
podcast today doing this very talk is because I went through a massive drop in mood and major irritability after my recent tooth operation, which as many of you know I had. I had to cancel the podcast to have my tooth done. Now, the guy after said, you've got to take antibiotics because you really just, like, you have to if you want to really sort this thing out. So I took um, took antibiotics, but that is one of, if not the leading cause of what brings on candida and fungus and all these things you don't want in your gut that cause all these awful symptoms. And I, I for like th- three or four weeks after having my tooth done, kept brushing it off as like, no, no, I just need to meditate more. And so I would, I would be just doing even more meditation. It was like 45 minutes a day, sometimes an hour a day, like just calm, just bringing that calmness, calmness, calmness. And, and that worked, like it really worked. And it did, it did a huge, huge, huge amount to help me heal after my tooth. But there was just this lingering irritability that I just couldn't shake off. Like my daughter would do something very innocent and I would just get way too easily irritated by it. And I could feel it in my, in my tummy. Or, um, you know, I, my sleep was getting a bit weird and my, and my brain felt like dizzy. And this is like a massive anxiety that I have, that I have because I, I look at the way my, my grandpa went. He had dementia and, and I've got other people in my family who've had problems like that. And I was then getting all this crazy anxiety like, oh, fuck, what's going wrong with my brain? Like, what is wrong with me? I'm going crazy. I really felt like I was going crazy. Like, I couldn't remember stuff. And I, I, I was like missing words when I was saying things to people. And fuck, I just felt... I felt really, really weird. And I I knew that my intake of fruit and my um, intake of like these biscuits that I make on a Sunday with sugar, like I knew there was a bunch of stuff that I was doing, which I needed to do, but I was just shrugging under the carpet. I was just like sweeping it under the rug and not getting on with it because I didn't want to face the truth. And the truth was that I knew my gut needed fixing. I knew... I had to sort that out. And it's like, if we ever face, if you ever face a situation when the truth is trying to knock on the door and we're just ignoring it over and over and over, eventually the truth will just come bursting in through the door. And that's the last thing we want. And the truth bursting in through the door is a major, major health issue. But what we're trying to do here is prevent that from happening. We're not trying to have a situation where we have to take pills for the rest of our lives or have some crazy operation or have some major thing where the truth just comes smashing through the door. What we want to do is if the truth is knocking like this, if you have symptoms in your brain, in your gut, in your joints, your skin, irritability, mood swings, if you're getting symptoms that you can't explain and you're getting food intolerances and you're getting strange digestion, if you're getting these things, remember that's the truth trying to knock on the door. The truth is that you need to fix your gut. You need to heal your gut, or at least um, if you know someone who's been going through um, health issues, is help them heal their gut as well. Because what we can start to see is that the more research we do on the gut, the more we start to realize it's the kind of epicenter of our well-being. Yes, the mind is is, is the other part that, 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 that we've got to become more mindful. I think that's the absolute base, and we've got to meditate, but the gut is hugely responsible for how well we feel, how happy we feel internally. So let's just take you straight to it. I want to just go straight to the to, to, to the meat on the bone. I don't want to fuck around. Let's get straight to it um, and, and talk to you about... So they were the symptoms. Let's just go through the foods that you'd probably want to avoid or definitely want to avoid at least for four weeks if you're looking to kind of heal your IBS your irritability, your digestive stuff, and your bloating, if you've had bloating. If you just want to feel cleansed and feel back on form, that good form that you know you want to be in, and, and feel buzzing and happy and, and, and feeling good for no good reason. Isn't that, fucking, isn't that a cool quote? I love that quote, feeling good for no good reason. Because I tell you, I've been doing this, this protocol now for three and a half weeks, and I just feel so much better. I'm actually leaner as well. So that's a nice side effect. I feel my, I can really feel so much lean. I see my muscles more. I feel stronger, more vital. So let's go straight to it. And, and these are the, the foods that you want to avoid for four weeks. So 
I'll give you a little bit of a reason why, but you don't really have to know that much detail. Like, I don't want to go too much into the science. But basically, the fo- foods to avoid are sweet fruits, which include things like mango, melon, stuff like that, bananas, sugar, and that's sugar in any form. So that's honey, molasses, maple syrup, caster sugar, um, you know, agave syrup. Um, anything that, or even dates, dried fruit, anything that's that's considered sugar, doesn't matter whether it's like a packet of Haribo's or maple syrup or honey or anything. Basically, fungus love to feed off sugar. And when you feed them sugar, um, which is the thing they love the most, the symptoms that, that lead on from that can really basically just make you not as happy as you can be. And if there's any goal more worthy than happiness i'd like to know about it because it just seems like that's what we all want we all want to feel happy so just keep the sugars out the next one is alcohol because alcohol has hey elizabeth hey carol alcohol has um yeast in it like actually in the 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 liquid itself so that feeds yeast you want to try and avoid alcohol bread and again another one that that's got yeast in it um pastries it's an obvious one um, and then actually try and avoid sweet potato as well, because sweet potato um, is very, very rich in sugars as well. And, and if you're going to have sweet potato, it's OK. But if you're going to have sweet potato, try and have it um, steamed and mashed as opposed to, to roasted, because the roasting effect is what increases the sugars, which is what feeds the fungus as well. Make, can, can make you more bloated. Um, now, listen, that's that's the foods to avoid. The foods to eat... Ah, let's go through this. And you might want to record this. You might want to write this down on a piece of paper. But if you're really looking to get your health back on track and and, and, and just feel that, that happiness and vitality that comes from feeling really good and, and, and having your gut back in order, these are the foods to eat. Squash, that's butternut squash, white potato, beans, fish, good quality organic meats, ginger, garlic, swede, parsnip, berries, green apples, as opposed to red ones, but try and stick to the green apples if you can, because they actually are good for gut flora, but the, but the red apples can be not so great. Um, and as much green vegetables as you want, as much green vegetables as you want. So that's the list of what you, you, you can and can't eat. If you want me to repeat that, please just comment in and, and, and ask me to repeat it. I don't need to go into the science of exactly why, but the, 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 the essential thing to remember is this. The more sweet and processed your diet is, the more it's going to raise the things in your gut that you do not, do not want. And the more those things in your gut that you don't want are raised up, the more your brain's going to feel irritable, you're going to feel, have mood swings. Skin is going to be disrupted. Your sleep will be disrupted. You'll feel bloated. All those things you don't want. So just notice that if you've got a sweet tooth, just see if you can just temper it off for four weeks. Because my friend, my goodness me, by the end of this four weeks, imagine having that kind of energy that you had when you were like 15 again. And imagine just having that lightness in your body like you had when you were young again. And imagine just being able to just bounce from one thing to the next, just feeling that insane vitality, that amazing abundant vitality that will spread and pervade to all areas of your life. Not not just your health. This is not just about that. This is about, about everything, about what you're looking to manifest. It's about the quality of, of, of how you feel around your loved ones. Because I know for me, I wasn't as loving towards my wife as I could have been. In that time, and as, as the weeks have gone on, I've I've really just kind of upped my game in that department again, and just and just practiced really just giving her more hugs and saying I love you more and doing more chores and being who I really want to be. But I felt like I couldn't be that person when I had this digestive issue, when I had my fungus come up, because my brain was foggy and I felt tired, I felt irritable, and I I didn't want to be as loving. Uh, as I can be and I think it's why it's like if you want to live a life that's full of love give love out it's like a boomerang and uh, 
it, it, it really is so important that if you want to really authentically give that love out, because geez, we can do it inauthentically. We can, we can fake it, but do you know what? That just gets so tiring. It's so much easier to give authentically when you feel really good inside because you're taking great care of yourself. Those are the foods to eat. Those are the foods to avoid. I want to now take you onto the protocol. This is the next part of the protocol, and it's about the supplements to eat while you do this this uh, gut healing protocol. So the very first one is raw olive oil three times a day, tablespoon. The second one is raw coconut oil, three teaspoons a day. The third one is oregano oil, which you can order on Amazon. Get these little capsules and you take those. And that's three capsules, three times per day. Take glutamine, which is an amino acid. I'll explain more about glutamine in a second. I'll go through a little bit of the science. Just very, very rough science on this. Um, and, and we'll talk about probiotics in a second. But the, the glutamine, I want you to take that three times a day, a teaspoon in each dose because of this. Now, glutamine is an amino acid. It's a natural amino acid, naturally found in foods. But when you extract it and take it separately, glutamine um, helps heal your gut. So it just gets you pooing really well again. It gets you feeling like that whole system is working again really well. And the reason why it does that is it repairs this little lining just inside the gut wall. So glutamine is like, um, it's like a plasterer who goes diving down inside, start, start inside your bum hole. Well, you know, let's maybe not be too graphic, but goes inside your guts and just taps away at all the little bits that need repairing, all the little holes, the problems, the mucosal lining that's 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 not working, um, and it helps basically heal that lining. And the, the more healed that lining is, the better you poo, and so fungus doesn't have a chance to feed on undigested feces because what tends to happen is if you're constipated, is the fungus love that. So if you're not going regularly, one, two, three, four times a day. Again, you're more likely to get bloated. You're more likely to get this irritability, mood swings, all these things. So glutamine, which you can order on Amazon, I recommend buying a 500 gram bag. You shouldn't have to spend more than about 10 to 12 pounds and take it three times a day. And out of that whole list of supplements, if you're just going to do one or two, I would say glutamine and coconut oil are the two most important ones because coconut oil has something called lauric acid in it. And lauric acid has been proven to be nature's most powerful antifungal. So when you take coconut oil and just eat it, just eat it raw like this, just take a teaspoon of it, boom, pop it in. Three times per day, you'll notice you feel less bloated, your brain will feel more alert, you'll feel calmer, all these good things. So... Moving on, moving on. I can smell right now. I'm sat here right now, and there's chicken curry in the um, in the room next door that my mum has done. And my God, boy, am I looking forward to that? Sorry, not my mum. My mother-in-law, actually. I should get that right. My mum's on holiday, but we're at my mum's house. It's all very confusing. <laughs> um, what I want to do now is go through three lifestyle tips that you want to try and implement into your life that will enable you to keep your gut healthy, to therefore keep your body healthy, to therefore keep your mind healthy as well. The first thing is to reduce stress. Now, stress is something that ultimately quite often we can't control, like traffic jams, um, bills to pay, um, people being annoying, you know, health stuff to deal with, you know, the pressures of being a parent, like, you know, I, there are millions and millions of stresses. We go through these things called stress. Now, we can't necessarily eliminate them, but the simplest and best way to, to reduce stress is to change your perception of it. Now, let's say you have someone in your life who annoys you and frustrates you and upsets you and makes you angry. 
that will lead to emotional stress in your system, which will lead to the fungus feeding off of that stress because they feed off stress because stress produces more sugar in your body. I don't need to go into the science, but that's what happens. And then all these wrong bacteria, they all then love that sugar that's, go, that's inside your gut. So if you're finding someone or certain people in your life are really stressing you out, it's really important that you do one of two things. One, say no and avoid certain people and maybe just um, you know, politely just ignore their messages if you need to. I don't know. I don't... The thing is, is that you're the one in control here. If you feel like you can avoid certain people, then do it. Be assertive about your needs. Be assertive about your your want, not just your need, but your want to be happy, your want to be healthy. This is your life. You're the one living it. You're the one that deserves to feel the best that you can feel. Like we get into this idea in society today that we've got to save face and we've got to see people. And we've got to do this and we should and we should and we ought to. And yet, A, people don't really care that much if they see us or not. But if they do, and if they want to get arsy about it, they want to get pissy, then go let them. We can't change that. But I do believe that one of, if not the biggest stressor that I've noticed in my life and the lives of other people is other people. And I think the simplest and quickest way that you can eliminate that stress is just start saying no to them. Start avoiding them, just maybe evolve out of that pattern of seeing them all the time and be more assertive about your needs and then the second thing is if you can't avoid certain people certain situations things at work things with your spouse I don't know like children whatever it may be if there's things you can't avoid stresses you can't avoid learn mindfulness learn to meditate learn how to create that separation between you this observer of life and what's going on around you. When you can create a separation, when you can just and increase your awareness and just pay more attention to the moment, you'll notice that even if you have a stimulus that's potentially stressful, There'll be this little gap because there's stimulus here, traffic jam, annoying person, you get a bill in the post, something goes wrong, you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see. Like, I mean, the stresses that are entering our lives, like this is the stimulus, this thing here. And over here, I'll do that with my hand. <laughs> over here is the response. Now in the middle, in this little gap here, is a gap where you get to choose your response, as Viktor Frankl once said. So if something happens here, you've got a little bit of time, like between one and maybe five seconds, to choose your response. And the more you can master that skill, the more you will master how to reduce stress. And the more you reduce stress, the better your gut's gonna feel, the leaner you're gonna become, the healthier you're gonna become, the happier you're gonna become. The best, best way to learn how to reduce stress is meditation. Because in that meditation every morning, you're harnessing the power in observation. And when you can maintain that power throughout the day, where you just observe rather than judge and react, you'll feel less stress and you'll feel healthier and happier and your gut will feel healthier and happier as well. So the second lifestyle tip to improve your gut is to get eight to 10 hours sleep a night. Now, when it comes to sleep, try and black out your room as much as you can, like so that you can't even see any light whatsoever, because that's going to drastically improve the quality of your sleep. Um, take magnesium supplement if you can. Uh, I recommend chelated magnesium by Doctor's Best. It's the most common magnesium you can get on Amazon, and it's a phenomenal supplement. If you're a large male and you've been very active, take between sort of six to ten capsules before bed. If you're a small female and been less active, two to four capsules. But just remember, you can't overdose on magnesium. 
um, anything that your body doesn't use, it will excrete in your poo. And so there's no risk there. Um, just play with the dose. So you'll know when you've reached your dose because your stool will get seriously loose. So just know that that's, that's the symptom of when you've reached your, your, your dose. But sleep is huge for improving your gut health because the more you get, the more you repair your body, the more you repair your body, the more likely you are you're going to have a very, very robust immune system. Take magnesium, the second tip for sleep. The third tip for sleep is to avoid phones in the kind of half hour, hour before sleep and try and just read. It's a very basic thing that I think we most of us know, but how many times have, have, have we taken our mobile phone or our tablet to bed? Um, I'll be the first to admit I've done that, but, but, but the more you can just switch the phone off, stick it on flight mode, set your alarm for the next morning, whatever you need to do, and then just leave it next to your bed and then just have a solid hour of reading, you'll notice that you'll, you'll sleep better for it. Um, I think it's really key to point out on that one that if you have pending emails or pending WhatsApps or messages or all these things that, that you feel like you need to get back to at 9.30, 10 p.m., you know, late into the evening, ask yourself why. Ask yourself why, why am I getting, having, feeling the need to get back to all these things? It's probably that you are worried that if you don't get back to them that somehow something bad is going to happen or people are going to think that you're ignoring them, but of course they're not. Just give, give it another day and come back to all your messages the next day, your emails, and, and, and give it that rest and, and, get, and give your body what it deserves because you only get one crack at this life and you only get one body. Treat it with its utmost respect. So get that rest. Leave your messages till the next day. Everything will be fine. Um, the final one is take time to be in nature. I read a study in Psychology's magazine that showed that People who get outdoors every single day despite the weather are 65% less stressed on average than people who remain indoors. Now, that absolutely blew me away. And it's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm a very happy person. And I'm sure one of the biggest reasons why you are if you tend to get outside a lot. Now, it just so happens that we're coming into a time of year where it's maybe sometimes less appealing to get outside. Now, I can understand that. Um, you know, I can appreciate that and, and, and not necessarily um, empathise because I never experienced that. I tend to just want to go out all the time. But it is that time of year. It is getting darker. It is getting rainy and colder. But just make the effort, if you can, my friend, to just have a half an hour walk or an hour's walk a day where you just get the, get the raincoat on. Just say, right, I'm going to get out there and, and, and do what you can do. Because again, You'll feel healthier for it. Your gut will feel healthier. Your body will feel healthier. And your mind, therefore, will feel healthier. And you'll feel happier. And you'll start to notice that you don't need a flashy car or a, a, a massively successful career or or anything in between. Five-star holidays. All these things that, that, that are wonderful. We don't need these things to feel happy. To feel happy is to to do things like take care of your health, take care of your body. So get into nature if you can, even if the weather isn't playing ball. Um, three books and resources to check out on all of this stuff is is my one of basically my original teacher, my original uh, mentor, a guy called Paul Check. So P A U L. I think you all know how to spell Paul. <laughs> Paul, check, but check is less obvious because his surname is spelled C H E K. Paul checks eat, move, be healthy. So have a look at that book on Amazon. The next thing is to look at the Fungus Link by Doug Kaufman, and Kaufman spelled K A U F F M A N. And then the last resource to check out is Chris Cress's website and podcast the health detective um chris crasser has taught me a tremendous amount about um, mindfulness and um the uh the effects of nutrition 
diet lifestyle upon health and happiness. So check out Chris Cresser. Now, Chris Cresser is spelt Chris, as it would be. Cresser is with a K-R-E-S-S-E-R. Cresser, like that. My friends, take a breath. We have come to the end, and I just want to say that it is an absolute honour creating these podcasts. I get a tremendous amount of joy out of being here, out of being in this experience, being in this leadership experience of, of fronting up the Wills Wellness Warrior Group, and there is so much exciting stuff to come, and, and I'm looking at venues for the Wellness Warrior event which is going to be taking place. And yes, Carol, yeah, just quickly interject. I will post those up. I will post the books up on, 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 the, on the page. Um, but yeah, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be doing this. And I, I, I get so much joy from creating these posts and being here. And as long as you guys keep enjoying what it is that I'm doing, I'll keep turning up. My friends, that is all from me. I'm going to shoot off. I'm going to join my family. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Listen, if you have anything that you want to um, ask me, um, I'm just reading that comment. If there's anything you want to ask me um, relating to this podcast, then please, please, please comment in. If you're watching this as a replay in particular, please comment in still on this uh, on this podcast and I will get back to you. I, I like to always get back to the comments on, on this podcast. So, My friends, that is all from me. Loads of love.